It might not be considered a classic when compared to the Godzilla franchise or any of the masterpieces from Ray Harryhausen, yet it still holds the distinction as being one of the most realistic science fiction monster movies ever made. Released in 2008, it took the concept of a monster destroying a city to a whole new level. Yes, we're talking about Cloverfield, and this is Sign 5. Cloverfield was conceived by J.J. Abrams whilst visiting Japan, when he realised that Japan had the iconic Godzilla, whilst America didn't have any large, ferocious monsters of its own. So he decided to create one, and what a creation it turned out to be. The film's premise is reasonably straightforward, in that a large monster of unknown origin is terrorising New York City. Whilst our protagonists, along with all the citizens of the city, do what they can to escape the carnage. At face value, the film gives the clear impression it's just a case of same old, same old, with nothing new at all to contribute to the genre. Yet placed alongside the long succession of monster movies made throughout history, and it becomes evident that Cloverfield stands alone for four very distinct reasons. The first is its unique production style, which not only uses the found footage concept with great effect, but the film is shot using a method which gives the impression it was all recorded on a consumer handycam, which is being haphazardly carried around by the character of HUD. Complementing the POV footage is HUD's continual off-screen commentary as he describes his self-appointed task of documenting everything going on around him. This production method not only gives the film an unparalleled level of realism and believability, but unfortunately it could, especially if you see the film in a cinema, also give you motion sickness. Secondly, the film was quite ingenious in casting actors who, at the time, were relative unknowns with no A-list stars at all. As a consequence, it's easy to believe these people are who they appear to be, especially in the film's opening minutes, which plays out like an actual interpersonal relationship drama. In addition, the significance of the characters is that they are just normal, everyday people, which is highly unorthodox for a monster film where traditional government or military figures would feature more prominently. The third reason is the monster itself. Its origin, history and motivations are all completely unknown. It's just this large, uncontrollable, destructive beast which means for anyone living in the city, it's the embodiment of absolute sheer terror. And there's certainly something to be said when even the might of the US military struggle to stop it. The final reason why Cloverfield works so well is its ending. Somewhat poetically, being set in New York City means it isn't susceptible to a typical Hollywood finale, which in turn makes for a very satisfying conclusion. Under the outstanding direction of Matt Reeves, Cloverfield was a great success. This was primarily because it not only took itself seriously, but the characters acted exactly as normal people would in a desperate situation. Importantly, they didn't follow the typical Hollywood trope of suddenly becoming unexpected heroes. If anything, the film was excellent in conveying the genuine fear and anxiety people experience when subjected to a major crisis where the possibility of death is very real. Naturally, with the film being so successful, some sequels are going to be planned, and there were a couple of unofficial ones listed as being in the Cloververse, However, there was a plan to do a sequel based on an event within the film itself. In the movie, the character of HUD is pointing a video camera around the bridge. At one point, he aims it at a person who's holding a video camera pointed back at him. The idea of the sequel is it would have been the footage from that particular camera, which would have shown exactly the same event that we're seeing, but from a completely different perspective. Now, that would have made for a very interesting concept. Another welcome adjustment to the traditional Hollywood cliche is the complete absence of a human antagonist. In fact, all of the film's characters are on equal footing with each other, with no one alpha person dominating or controlling the group. Moreover, the film is an excellent example of the massive logistics involved in trying to quickly evacuate people from an island city. So who should see the film? Traditionally, monster films have always been considered light-hearted family entertainment, as people young and old find joy in seeing large beasts destroying a city in a kaleidoscope of great special effects. And to this end, Cloverfield is no different, but that's where the similarity ends. Make no mistake, Cloverfield is a very intense experience, and for this reason cannot be categorised as a typical Saturday movie matinee frolic. In addition, despite its entirely fictitious concept, it could be considered a little too real, so it's probably not suitable for young children. So if you haven't seen the film before, then you're in for a treat. Cloverfield is one of the best non-famous monster movies you'll ever see. Aside from being unbelievably realistic in its production style, it has great characters, an awesome premise, and one of the scariest monsters you'll ever see. For that reason alone, it's well worth watching.